Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar covering the built-in effects inside Final Cut Pro 10. There's a lot of different effects that Final Cut provides, those that are associated with every clip and those that you apply to a single clip. The built-in effects, the ones that are associated to all the clips inside your project, are the ones we're going to be talking about today. This is the third in our four-part series on understanding how Final Cut 10 works, and I can't wait to show you some of the new features. So let's get ourselves started. In fact, my goals for today are to illustrate how to create audio and video transitions, illustrate the effects that are available to every clip, what Apple calls built-in effects, and provide a variety of step-by-step -step examples on how to use them. Let me define terms before we get too far down the road, however. Built-in effects are effects which are available to every clip without needing to apply a filter. These include scale, position, rotation, clip speed, cropping, distortion, moves on stills, and a wide variety of others. Clip effects are effects that are assigned to a clip using filters. This includes chroma keys and masks, stylized and, uh, and distortion filters, and audio filters. What I want to cover today includes creating video and audio transitions, creating an animated picture-in-picture -picture effect, showing you how to create a freeze frame and change the speed of a clip, illustrate the differences between trimming, cropping, and Ken Burns tools, show how to stabilize a shaky image, correct for a rolling shutter, which is a problem with DSLR cameras, and animate an effect using keyframes, what Apple calls video animation. So with that, let's get ourselves started. <laughs> I couldn't resist. This is a training webinar. What better thing to put on the screen than trains? This shot came from Miles Hale. He and his wife, Fran, run a company called Model Railroad Builders, and I'll be using their footage in a variety of training you'll be seeing over the coming weeks, but I couldn't wait to show you that one shot because what's better than trains for training? <laughs> All right, maybe you're not impressed, but I think it's great. Let's take a look at what we have available to us for transitions. I want to start there first. Transitions, as you know, include three different things. They could be a cut, it could be a wipe, it could be a dissolve. And Final Cut 10 supports all of these. Cuts are easy. It just simply is an instantaneous transition from one shot to the next. And a dissolve is fairly easy. If we click on the edit point itself, notice I'm on the primary storyline here. Click on the edit point itself, type Command T, I add a transition, and as I play it, we fade up from black, just as you would expect. If I want to dissolve between two shots, highlight the edit point between the two shots I want to dissolve from, type Command T, and it adds a transition. If I grab the wing of the transition, I can drag it to make the transition linger, or I can grab it to make the transition occur much more quickly. The default duration of a transition is one second, but you can control this and change it by going to Final Cut Pro Preferences. Inside the Editing tab, see where it says Transitions, Default Length. My personal favorite, because I do a lot of 30-frame editing, is 20 frames, two-thirds of a second. So I enter in the duration of what I would prefer my dissolves to be, which is 20 frames. This works in hundredths of a second because there's so many different frame rates for us to work with, from 24 up to 60. The default setting, which is available media, means that if I don't have handles, I can't apply a transition. New with Final Cut 10 is changing the setting to full overlap, which means that if you don't have sufficient handles, Final Cut will pull up the downstream clip sufficient for you to add the transition. So it shortens the second shot, but means that you can add a dissolve where there wouldn't be enough handles. Because I do understand what handles are and I understand how they work, I prefer leaving the setting to available media, which is the way that Final Cut 7 works. So for today, we're going to work with default transitions of two-thirds of a second with available media, but you can change this to whatever is your preference in Final Cut 10 yourself. So we've seen that we can apply a transition by highlighting the edit point and typing Command T. We can change the duration of a transition by grabbing the wings and dragging it. And to delete a transition, simply click in the middle of it to highlight the whole thing and press the Delete key and the transition's gone. Well, this works great for the primary storyline. But it doesn't work great when you're working with connected clips. And notice that I've got a connected clip here and a connected storyline. If we take a look at a connected clip, which is this one, I'm going to click the leading edge, just click on the end of that clip, type Command-T, and absolutely nothing happens. And that's because 
you cannot add a transition to a connected clip. What we have to do instead is we've got to convert it from a connected clip to a connected storyline. So I'm going to select the clip or clips that I want to turn into a connected storyline. You can see the difference. Notice there's no bar over the top of this clip, and there is a bar over the top of these clips. These are a connected storyline. This is a connected clip. With that clip selected, go up to the Clip menu, go down to the very first choice, Create Storyline. Keyboard shortcut is Command-G. Watch the Earth in space in 2, 1, woof, and now a bar appears over it. It's now been turned from a connected clip into a connected storyline. Let's click on the lead, the in edit, the start of that clip, type command T, and that easily we've now added a dissolve to the start of that shot. Again, you can tweak the dissolve by grabbing an edge and dragging it and highlighting it to select the entire transition, hit the delete key, and it's gone. Here, for instance, I want to do a transition. It's already a storyline. I can just simply click where I want the transitions to be and add transitions to each of those. And so now it fades in, and we do transitions to all the other shots. Notice there was a, a jump cut right there. The reason the jump cut is if I, if I was really thinking about this, I'd have the shot start a little bit before the edit point, not at the edit point, because... Otherwise, it would look pretty ugly.